Good morning. Welcome to Daily Prayer on Friday the 27th of August. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me this morning. And particularly as today we enter the Bank Holiday Weekend, it's also significant because we finish reading through the Book of the Acts of the Apostles. I hope you've enjoyed reading through, listening to this account of the growth uh, of the early church and maybe it's had something to say to you about the power and also the problems that there are as we seek to be God's new community of believers in the church today. As we come together now, let's bow our heads, shall we? And in our time of prayer today, let's ask for an awareness of God's presence as we gather in the name of the risen Lord. Psalm 14. Fools say in their hearts there is no God. They are corrupt, they do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise who seek after God. They have all gone astray, they are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers? who eat up my people as they eat up bread and do not call upon the Lord. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. O oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. Thanks be to God for his word. Now let's pray together. Oh God, our Redeemer, we praise you this day for Jesus Christ and for the glory of your work in and through him. We thank you for his life in all its fullness of doing and being. For his following through of your way to the end. And for your raising of him and all who follow him. For our world, Lord, and for all of you that it contains. And for our life and the opportunity of living with you that it offers, we praise and adore you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Loving God, in the security of quiet prayer, we confess to you that we have failed to live up to the reasonable expectations of others. We have fallen short of our own modest standards, and we are far from being all that you would have us to be. We have hurt our fellow men and women, disappointed ourselves and added to your suffering. In the name of Jesus Christ, who welcomed sinners and lifted up the downcast, we ask you to forgive us for what we have done and what we have made of ourselves. Refresh our faith in your willingness to accept us. Help us to enjoy our standing as your much-loved children and enable us to live lives in which you can take delight. So may Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our final reading today from the book of the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 28 we begin to read at the 17th verse. Three days later Paul called together the local leaders of the Jews 
When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with chain. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think. For with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening he explains the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he had said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Let it be known to you then, that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense, and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Thanks be to God for his word. So right at the end of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we find Paul preaching. The main focus and thrust of his ministry from his conversion on the road to Damascus has been preaching first to those Jewish people who would listen. And his thinking and his preaching is shaped by his tradition. As he himself says of his upbringing, he was schooled very much in the ways of Juda Judaism. And he was most aware of all the uh, teachings of the law and the prophets, but he found in Jesus Christ the fulfilment of all that had been taught in the Old Testament, our Old Testament, and therefore uh, felt that it was his job to call all peoples, both Jews and Gentiles, for that was the thrust of his message, to the salvation and to the faith that comes by responding to God's word. In that uh, Acts 10 verse 34, he spoke about God showing no partiality and about the importance, and he modelled this all the way through his ministry, about the importance of preaching to all who would listen. But here there is the turning, the turning of attention, the turning of focus to Paul's mission to the Gentiles which would continue and would be the focus now of those who would listen. He was no longer um, preaching primarily for Jewish people. It was preaching for all who would listen. And the basic message is this, that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. Lord, the word we would might use would be leader, one who has ultimate authority, one to whom we give responsibility for providing us with direction and Christ that Greek word for Messiah the fulfillment of all that God had said and taught 
And this, of course, goes right the way back to the beginning of Acts in chapter 4, where the answers, the prayers were being now answered. Those prayers which were offered by the early Christians about how God would raise up people who he would call himself as part of that new community, the ecclesia, the church of God in Christ. And as we conclude our readings through Acts, I just want to encourage us in these days that, of course, for whoever will listen, from whatever background they may come, our challenge is to present Jesus to people. It is difficult and yet as simple as that. To apply the truths of who Jesus is, what he said, what he wants to do, and how our faith in him can be applied into our daily living. That's what our call is as Christians, to whoever God would call. And to do it in ways that people will understand. It's a great challenge, it's a great call, it's a great commission. It's a great gospel, and it's for you and I to share in together. So let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let's bring our intercessions to the Lord. Let's pray. Firstly, this morning we pray for those who have lost loved ones in the devastating attack at Kabul International Airport yesterday. For those who have died, those who have died, and for those who have suffered and injured. We remember them in our prayers and offer them to you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the safe evacuation of all who would seek to leave Afghanistan. And we pray for those who will be now left behind, that, Father, you will keep them safe, that, Lord, you will watch over them, protect them, and that there may yet be ways for them to find safety and peace and security. Lord, we pray that you will heal the divisions of that whole part of the world. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Algeria in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. We pray for church leaders and ask Lord that you give them wisdom and insight how best to serve their congregations and to maintain deep fellowship between believers even in the face of opposition from the government. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. We pray for our own government and continue to pray Lord for integrity. We continue to pray for justice and we continue to pray for the honouring of all commitments made. We pray Lord you'd give them wisdom. We pray Lord that you would give them compassion and we pray Lord that you'd help them to make wise decisions at national and at local level. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of BMS World Mission. We pray for its relief work, particularly one year on today when we remember the terrible explosion in Beirut. We pray for the partnerships BMS World Mission has in Lebanon. We pray for all those who are affected by the ongoing situations of the economic crisis and COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Then we pray for ourselves and for those we know and love in a moment of quiet prayer.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So Lord, help us to be filled with your spirit of life, that we may be people of life, servants of life, encouragers of life, signs of Christ in your world the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. God bless you today and keep you safe. Until we meet again, goodbye and God bless you.